What's going on, everybody? I'm Max Ralph. Seth Engel. Quick picks. It's on the screen. Um, Penn State's traveling to Auburn this weekend. It's it's a big game. Seth, what, what do you what do you like? Yeah, it is a big game. You're right. Um, there's a lot on the line, I think, for both teams here in mm. different situations. I think this is a game Penn State really needs to win to keep that momentum going early on. I agree. Um, for Auburn, you know, Brian Arson's on the hot seat here. Yeah, this, is, this is this is a big game that he, you know, they got to win for his mm. sake. Um, going into it, I mean, I look at Auburn's offense, and I'm a little confused in, a little, in some areas here. Mm. Tank Bigsby, you know, he's one of the best running backs in the country. Jarquez Hunter. You know, they pull off a great tandem mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. But then you look at the, the situation at quarterback. It's weird. It, it's a, it's a two-quarterback situation, which is very different than what Penn State has seen. But neither of them are, like, great in the passing game. Exactly. Um, so basically what it is, it's T.J. Finley, who's a former mm-hmm. transfer from LSU. Um, he's their passing quarterback. Yeah. But he hasn't performed that great through mm-hmm. two games. Through two interceptions in the opener. And obviously they, Auburn squeaked by San Jose State yeah, so. last week. And then the other guy is Robbie Ashford, um, who's a local guy. Penn State had actually recruited him. Mm-hmm. Um, now he's at Auburn, used to play for Oregon, mm-hmm. and he's kind of their, their running quarterback. Yeah. So they kind of you know split snaps a little bit. They do. Um, this week, actually, for the first time all season, their depth chart was listed as T.J. Finley or Robbie Ashford. For the first two weeks, it was just T.J. Finley right. as the starter. So, it, who knows? It's weird. Yeah, so we don't really know who we'll see more there. Um, Penn State has not faced you know, a run-heavy offense yet this year. It's been two super pass-heavy offenses mm-hmm. in Purdue and Ohio. Um, Secondary has been really strong. But the question mark with the defense so far has been, you know, can, can they rush the pass? Um, how strong is that defensive line actually? And then also, you know, Those linebackers, you know, can they perform well Mm -hmm. against one of the strongest rushing attacks in the country? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, Tyler Elsden won that job at middle linebacker out of camp, and he hasn't been awful, but he hasn't really done anything that's made me go like, oh, this guy, there's a reason why he won. And Kobe King's kind of the same way. I do still hold with what I said in the preseason that I think Kobe King will be the long-term starter at that spot. But, like, neither one of them has been awesome. Curtis Jacobs, good. Honestly, he's been, like... We haven't s- talked about him a lot this year, and I like I think he's been kind of quiet per se, but he's still getting the job done. Yeah. Honestly, John Sutherland, I've been really impressed with so far this season. And then the questions we had about depth at linebacker kind of got answered with how good Abdul Carter's been on that strong side behind Jacobs. Right. So like it's really just Elsden and Kobe in the middle, and and you know that's <clears throat> the middle linebacker is arguably the most important position on the defense, let alone in the run game. And so when you when Tyler Elsden meets Tank Bigsby in the A gap on Saturday. How's that gonna go? I don't know. The uh, the Auburn offensive line is still a little questionable. So you know, pass rush. We'll see. Needs to get home this week because, like we've said, it's been talked about a lot. Only three sacks, and all three of them come from either a linebacker or a cornerback. The yeah. defensive line is not living up to expectations. Although Chop Robinson has looked very good through two weeks. Yeah, Chop's been pretty good. Um, I think with the defensive line right now is. There are a couple guys who are just coming back from mm-hmm. injury, PJ or coming PJ back PJ. from having not played last year. Hakeem Beeman, yep. for example. Mm-hmm. Um, Adisa Isaac is easing in. Mm-hmm. You know, he. We've we've talked about this before. He is not 100 percent healthy. Yep. He is 80 to 85. All right, we're back. I don't know if there was a weird um, stop in there, but we had some some camera uh, issues. But we we're talking about Penn State pass rush, and essentially, I wanted to bring up kind of this rotation that Manny Diaz has been doing on the defense. Um, James Franklin's been asked about it a lot, but we talked about it some. They're rotating in a lot of guys. You know, these defensive linemen aren't really seeing more than two plays at a time. You see guys going in and out, in and off the field as like as often as anybody. I think like I don't know how I feel about it honestly. Uh, I, I understand it in an ex- to an extent because it keeps guys fresh, especially like when we're talking about Adisa Isaac, PJ Mustafer, Hakeem Beeman, who didn't play last year for whatever reason, especially injuries. But I also feel like it's much like a running back where, you know, we've talked about the drive sharing and whatnot, and we talked about Singleton a lot last week. But I feel like defensive line is a lot like a running back where you need to be able to get in rhythm with your pass rush. Like, you need to be able to feel smooth. You need to get some reps and be able to feel out the tackle you're playing against and, like, see what works. And if you're just switching in so much, you don't really get that. And so that's why I kind of – I kind of – 
disagree with what Manny Diaz is doing to an extent. Obviously, against Ohio, it's yeah. one thing. I mean, you're going to win that game. You need to get guys rest. You need to see young guys. But I think this week against Auburn, I'd really like to see less rotation on the defensive line. Yeah, I mean, I understand it from both point of views. Mm -hmm. You know, the reason Manny Diaz is doing this for, you know, a couple of reasons, like you mentioned, it keeps guys on their feet. Mm -hmm. um, but also, we're in a new age of college football where, you know, there are certain guys, if they're not playing, yeah. they could potentially transfer. You know what I mean? So you have to, you kind of have to rotate in more guys than, right. than in, you know, a season five years ago. Mm -hmm. It's just different mm -hmm. like that. And then also, I think another thing is that, you know, Penn State's freshmen right now are making more of an impact yeah. than than any class they they've had in you know years. As far as back I can remember. So they're able to plug like a Zane Durant or deny Dennis Sutton for yeah. you know a majority of snaps in a game, and I that's mean, not. Vanover's been doing good exactly. Things. I mean, Vanover's been great, um, but those freshmen specifically mm -hmm. have been playing a lot. Abdul Carter as well. Mm -hmm. um, these guys are just getting you know a ton of playing time on the defense, which I think is. Different than what we've seen from Penn State, I think, ever, you know, dating back to Joe Paterno, like, mm -hmm. you wouldn't know, you know, a freshman was even on roster until they were, like, a sophomore just because you didn't even know what a recruiting class was. Right, exactly. Yeah. Now, let's, 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 this, this is a quick pick, so let's make some quick picks. I think to kind of call back to the start of the podcast, I agree, I think this is a huge game for Auburn. I mean, it's a huge game for both teams, but especially Auburn because of Brian Harson, you know. They already fired their AD. Um, I think if Auburn loses, that's a really bad thing for Brian Harson. Um, I also think Penn State is, by a somewhat wide margin, the better team on paper. So I think it's a letdown if Penn State goes in and loses. I think I, I, I wrote my score prediction. I was only one point off a year ago in the whiteout. I predicted 27-20, and it was 28-20, I think, or maybe the other way around. Um, I'm going 24 to 19 Penn State this weekend. Um, Penn State three touchdowns and a field goal. Auburn two touchdowns, a failed two point conversion, and two field goals. I think Tank Bigsby is going to kind of have his way, but I do think Penn State's offense is going to be strong enough through the air and on the ground to kind of keep that running game at bay to where TJ Finley has to game. <clears throat> excuse me, has to win the game for them late, and I I don't like that scenario for Auburn. So yeah. I'm going 24 19. Yeah, I have a little bit of a different approach to you. Um, I really like the three-point spread. I think that's going to be right on the money. Um, I'm going to go 30-27, you know, a little higher scoring. I have a lot of question marks about Penn State stopping the run here. Mm -hmm. um, I look back to that Illinois game last year, and I yes. say, how is Penn State's run defense di different than last year than it is right now? And what I see is a depleted linebacker core. Yeah. Um, that's a big question mark for me when you're going against – you know, one of the best rushing attacks in the country. Right. <clears throat> Offensively, I think the run game's going to keep going. Um, yeah. I, I think that left side of the O-line mm -hmm. is potentially one of the best, like, sides of an offensive line in the country. I think mm -hmm. Olu Fashanu is making himself, you know, arguably one Olu's of the best legit. tackles. Olu's you know? legit. Yeah. And Landon Tangwall as well on that left yeah. side. Um, and I think Penn State's going to read that well. Right side's got to come together. If, yeah. I mean, this is – this is it could get ugly. The Auburn pass rush is – Better than anything Penn State's seen so I mean, far this Der year. Derek Hall is, a, you know, a respected edge rusher. Caden Wallace um, is going to have his work cut out for him. I, or Bryce Effner. Yeah, I think I think Penn State wins this one. Thanks for watching, everybody. That's our quick picks. We both have Penn State, but it's going to be a close one. Uh, keep watching uh, on our YouTube channel and keep following along with us throughout the weekend at collegian.psu.edu and on Twitter at PSU Footblog and at One and Pod. Peace out.